Hello, my name is Adolfo, and this is Life of Adolfo. The Atlanta Braves are the World Series champions. I was just waiting for who was going to be the MVP, Jorge Soler. But first, I want to cover... I did take some bullet points because I don't want to sound redundant on what I'm going to say. But I wanted to cover the beginning. Basically, what I'm trying to say is that sometimes a suspension or someone being fired is a blessing. First, I'm going to cover the Astros. Then I'm going to cover the Atlanta Braves. With the Astros, we know that they won the World Series in 2017. All of a sudden, Matt Friars decides to say that they were stealing signs. 2020, we saw people getting suspended, fired, or they resigned. Joey Cora with the Boston Red Sox after they won the World Series. Then we have to look at Carlos Beltran. And, of course, A.J. Hicks, who got suspended. Then... They fired him. We also looked at the GM, Jeff Luna. He also got suspended, then got fired. And the reason I wanted to talk about Jeff Luna, he was a GM. He got fired by Jeff, uh, Jeff Crane. The new general manager was James Click. James Click is still the general manager. He did a phenomenal job acquiring these three relievers, uh, Graveman, Nathan from the Twins, and Garcia. Those were key players that were acquired. And that's why I say it's a blessing. Even though they didn't win the World Series, they got Dusty Baker as a, as a manager, and they got uh, Click James Click as their GM. They needed that fresh blood problem. Because even if A.J. Hinch would have been suspended and then come back, we don't know how the Astros would have been. We don't know with... Uh, Jeff Luna, the G GM, how they would assemble the team. And the reason I want to talk about Jeff Luna is because he did get suspended, but immediately he got fired. His suspension was going to be the longest since the Atlanta Braves GM got suspended for life. He was banned for life. I got to look at my notes because I, his name is so long. John Coppolella was the, the GM that was suspended for life. Like I said, there's sometimes a suspension or someone getting fired that is a blessing. And I believe, let me look at my years, 2017, the same year that the Astros won the World Series. That's when there was something going on with the international prospects that, that the Atlanta Braves had to release 13 of them. And they signed to other teams. The, the most Notable name that I remember back then was Kevin Maeda uh, going to the Anaheim Angels. Severino, I think he went to the Twins, but don't quote me on that. But the reason I say that's a blessing in disguise or, or it happened probably for a reason is that when the GM got banned for life, the Braves went to get Alex. Like I said, I don't know his last name. Alex Antopoulos, the one that is right now, the one they acquired all these outfielders and the, he assembled this team when they were behind the, the Mets. They were I, I'm not sure if they were behind the Phillies, but I know the Mets were in first place. By him doing what he did after Acuna was injured, he immediately went to go and get Jock Peterson. Like I said, I don't want to be jumping around a lot. But if Jock, Jock Peterson becomes a, he's a free agent and leaves, I don't know no other player that has won a back-to-back -back World Series and got his ring in a different organization. Because he won it with the Dodgers. He got his ring with the Cubs. Uh, that's where they gave him the ceremony. And then now with the uh, Braves, he got it again, another ring. If he don't sign with them, where is he going to get his ring? That, that, that was um, something that I was thinking about when I was uh, taking my notes. But you got you to gotta look at the, the, the Braves. The Braves outfield last year, Acuna, Pashi, um, Mar Marcakis that retired, and Osuna that uh, I'm not sure if he got suspended or, or they just put him on, on leave or whatever, but we already know his, 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 the problem that he's going through. I don't know. I don't know a lot of details on it. That's all I'm going to say on it. So 
this year, they got the wall back because he used to play last year with them. He only had one at bat last year in the playoffs against the Dodgers. They have Peterson that they got from the Cubs. Soler that they got, they got from Kansas City. Another player that won a World Series with a team. And then he got a ring with the Kansas City uh, um, Royals. Same thing could happen this year. He gets a ring, MVP, and might get his ring somewhere else because he might not be with the team next year. But the key thing is the team that they built. The other outfielder, Rosario. This outfield, I feel like, and like I said, I don't want to be jumping around. This is what the Yankees were looking for when they got Rizzo, Gallo, and everything. You either win by the home run or lose, lose by striking out. But Soler showed discipline. Uh, Peterson, he didn't play a lot. Duval, uh, the the uh, I'm not sure if he hit a grand slam. I think he did. He did hit the grand slam on game five. Rosario was phenomenal. But the cool thing about it is that they assembled it while they were still not in first place. The Peterson trade, and then they went to go get the other outfielders, including uh, Rosario that was injured uh, when they traded him for a uh, uh, Panda. Sandoval. Now, I wanted to also cover the the what do you call it? Uh, what could have been the turning point? What could have been the turning point for the Astros was in Game Five on Maldonado's at bat. When I saw him doing what he did, I'm like, oh man, this is shady. But at the same time, it's baseball. He was trying to eliminate the slider from AJ Minter, so he moved up it up in front. He got that walk. He was going to fake that bun. He got that walk. And I could see him screaming at first base. He, I don't know if he was telling the other player, the other batter, get close to the, uh, to the uh, line. But that was like the turning point for me. Because even though they were 4-0, they had, uh, I believe it was Tucker. Um, um, his last name is Tucker, the pitcher. I didn't feel like he was pitching good. Chavez, he was... He was mostly aiming the ball for, for a strike and he was living on the edge that I found that the Astros were going to come back. I was thinking that the Braves should put their top relievers in, which in one way is good that they didn't because they held them back. And the more you hold the reliever, the, the less that the other opponent is going to see them. So in one way, that was a good move, even though they lost the game. At the end, it was like 9-5, the, 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 the victory of the Astros. So I thought that was going to be the turning point. With the Astros, with the Braves, the turning point for me was when Ossie Albies got on base. Because I said, okay, this is the point where Garcia is going to cradle the ball and Ossie is going to steal the, the base. Garcia didn't do the crate. He went to his normal stance when people are on base. And I think that changed his, his, his way of pitching. Because if we recall on the other game that he pitched, I forgot what game, even John Small said people could steal the base on him. Even though I believe there was someone on third. But he mentioned that, that by cradling it, people could, if they had a speed runner, they could easily run on him. So maybe they told Garcia that, and he changed his uh, his pitching stance. Next thing you know, Rosario's in first, Ossie's in second. Same thing. He's not doing the cradle. The thing that caught me off guard is when Jorge Soler was still batting, three two count. How come he didn't switch to the cradle, the the little babysitting or, you know, the crate that they that he's used to do? I think if he would have done that, the pitching would have been different. Now that it was a 3-2 count, I think he could have done it because the runners are going to be running. But maybe he felt like if Soler gets a hit, that's going to give a chance of uh, Ossie Albies going all the way home, Rosario probably going to third or home. So that was the key, the key point for me when Ossie Albies got on base and next thing you know, uh, Jorge Soler hit it all the way over the rail tracks. The second one was when Freddie Freeman hit, a, I believe, a single or a double. And Horst Seller was in first base, and he made it auto all the way home. 
Now, talking about relief, like I said, I want to do it uh, doing bullet points. I know they compare this relief pitching to the 2015 Kansas City Royals. And in one way, I do agree because they were used as, as guaranteed weapons to come out of the bullpen to dominate the other team. By the way, the 2015 Mets catcher was Travis Darnor. So I'm just trying to link the players from before to now. But for me, I think that the 19, the, the best relief pitching for me is the 1990, and yes, I'm that old, the 1990, what do you call it, uh, Cincinnati Reds. Even though they only pitched 9.1 innings or 9.2, that was the best relief with the Nasty Boys because they didn't allow no runs. At the same time, they were not used the way the Astros or the Royals were used. Like, one pitcher only pitches three or four or five innings, with the exception of Johnny uh, uh, Johnny Cueto, that I think he had a complete game. With the Reds, Jose Rico took the, I think the, he took him to the sixth or seventh twice, and uh, Tom Brown, um, I believe his, uh, his name is Tom Brownie, Brown, Brownman, Brownman, something like that. He also pitched deep. So the Nasty Boys couldn't do it. Uh, they didn't pitch a lot. But they had shutout innings all the way to 9.1, 9.2. The Nasty Boys were Nor Norm Charlton, Randy Myers, and um, and Rob Dibble. Now, the reason I feel that was the best relief pitching, like I said, I'm jumping around a lot, is because of the opponent they faced. I know that the Kansas City Royals faced the Mets, but the Mets didn't really have a lot of power, a lot of key players. The Astros did have some. One through seven, they were solid, but they did struggle. The The Reds at that time, they faced the Oakland Athletics. Their team was stacked. I believe the Cobra was still with them. David Parker, Ricky Henderson, Mark McGuire, uh, Jose Canseco. I think I already mentioned Ricky Henderson. Uh, Mike Gallegos, Carney Lansford, Terry, Terry uh, Steinbach, uh, <clears throat> Willie McGee, and I forgot the other guy, Willie McGee, Willie Randolph. And like I said, I forgot other ones. Uh, Walt Weiss, the, one of the bench coaches of now, he was with that team, but he didn't play during the World Series. So I'm just trying to link people that made it to a World Series before to the Atlanta Braves that are in there that won, that won it this year, but haven't won it or won it before. So in my mind, this was a great Pitching, relief pitching from the Atlanta Braves. Even though I, I felt like they were not going to put AJ Mentor because, like I said, Maldonado, the way he, he did it, I think that they were going to try to do it again. Even though it was 7 0, 6 0 at one point, I felt like they were going to try to skip him too. The last thing I want to cover is Freddie Freeman. In the playoffs against the Dodgers, when he caught the last out, he threw it on the air. I'm like, what are you doing? Like, I collect memorabilia, memorabilia, and I'm like, what are you doing? That's that ball, that ball is valuable. At the same time, I realized that Freeman, when he did that, he didn't care about the value or the history of that ball, that what it could be. More of the the presence of him making it to the World Series. So I felt like he really wanted to win that World Series. Even though everybody wanted it, but I felt like he wanted it more. Because if you look at before, Gurriel, he pocketed the ball. Uh, Rizzo did it too. I forgot what Cash when they threw the last strikeout. He pocketed too. So now in the World Series, uh, Swanson gets the ball. Another thing about Swanson, respect. I think he was the number one pick. Breckman, number two. Uh, Brandon Rogers number three or shuffle him around. I don't know how, but you got to give credit because he got traded from the Diamondbacks to the place he's from. He got traded with, uh, <coughs> sorry, he got traded with uh, uh, Blake. I, th I think that's his, he was a pitcher and in, in, in Seattle, in, in Seattle, Itnar, in Seattle, I forgot his last name, but uh he got released or cut. He went to assignment and he got cut on this shuffling of the outfielders that the Braves did this year. The, what do you call it? The 
the Diamondbacks got Shelby Miller, the key player, and I forgot who else. But out of all the players, only Swanson is still with the with the team that got traded. And I'm happy that he got it, that, that he won the World Series because he will always, at that point, be compared with Bregman because they were the number one and number two or number one and number three uh, picks. So I got to give props to that. And Swanson. But he was going to throw it a second. Then he went to uh, first. I'm like, what are you doing? He's, Freeman is going to throw the ball probably to the stands. But the good, in one way, that's good that he threw it to Freeman because he's elonging the longest brave, or maybe not the longest, but he's the the guy that resembles the Braves right now. And when he caught it, he was gonna put it in his uh, glove. Then he put it in his pocket. I said, okay, cool. He he did the smart move. Now the last thing I want to cover is the dynasty. The dynasty of the Braves in the 1990s only won one one World Series, and it was against a team that people they didn't think he was, they were gonna win it. Even though John Small said that they were almost guaranteed to win it. I felt like that was the hardest one that they could have won because the Indians team was stacked. They only won World, won World Series throughout all that dynasty. And this team that it didn't look like they were going to make it to the playoffs and made it. And with the momentum, they got the World Series. And this is without Acuna, Sorocco, Sorocco Charlie Mort Morton still signed for one more year. Uh, one of the prospects didn't uh, struggle this year, I think. Christian Pashi. That I believe this team, even though it's still not a dynasty or it might not be a dynasty, it, it was that that they won it. Because you got to remember the Braves from 1991, 2005, they were dominant. They, 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 they dominated from 91, 93. They were the NL West champions. And then with the realignment from 95 to 2005, they were the NL East champions. So that's why I wanted to cover that, that part that the Braves of before, they, they were stacked. Uh, I ain't going to lie. This team, the trading and everything by the GM that I mentioned, that there's a blessing actually made this team feel confident that they were going to win it because their infield is, was good. Alvi struggled, but uh, the last game he didn't. Swanson, he hit a home run. Riley was hot. Freeman hit a home run in a, a single or a double. Dornall was catching good. Their outfield, all of them were solid. So I got to give it to the Braves. And that's all I wanted to say. I want to bring a little bit of history, a little bit of everything to the championship that the Braves won because maybe next year they're not going to have the same outfielders. I know that people are talking about Freeman, but if I was a betting man, he's going to come back. So I'm a Mets fan, and the Braves did good. Congratulations. Thank you.